Hello everyone and welcome back to Soul System Colonization. It's been a while since I've made a video on YouTube for this series and that is because of the update to KSP 1.1.2 which has had some bumps in the way I needed to check out the compatibility of everything. But we've been doing uh, Mars missions on the live streams and I just want to update you on the status of those missions. That's all I've been doing so far so I'm just going to go through the craft and first thing you'll notice is that we are we're going in pretty much real time with this craft which means this is on my new computer uh, partly funded by twitch donations partly funded by uh, YouTube revenue uh, partly funded by uh, gifts from peoples and uh, so it's been a, a, a widespread effort <laughs> anyway and I, I hope it will run well so uh, here we have the Mars cycler and so this is a habitat uh, food production facilities with a greenhouse and there's an algae farm on here somewhere and that is producing food and then there's uh, more supplies here and uh, on this side this is just a maneuvering stage and if we want to use uh, aero capture to get into orbit around Mars there is a heat shield there more likely this cycler is going to stay in orbit between Earth and Mars and what will happen is once it reaches Mars this portion is going to head off and bring it, uh, bring the crew into orbit around Mars, and then rendezvous with the ascent vehicle, which is actually going to bring them down as well. It's that's a descent and ascent vehicle. But there's a sort of a Dragon Two with a very heavy tank of monomethylhydrazine and N204, and we are using Super Dracos uh, to uh, slow down around Mars. So that's the plan there. And as you can see, the whole assembly is 80 tons. It was launched in multiple pieces. I believe this portion was on SLS. This, I think, was launched on a Falcon Heavy. Would make sense. But it's been a little bit of time since I launched this, and there are other things on their way to Mars. Right now, we can take a look at the course of this. And if we... This is still on, on its way out from Earth. And this is our approach to Mars. You can see periapsis uh, fairly close. We'll get it closer, obviously. But uh, right out from Earth, Earth SOI, we already have a Mars encounter. No need for a mid-course adjustment. So that is good. So that is the main body of the mission with uh, three Kerbals. Uh, these are actually Twitch viewers who were randomly selected for this mission. Uh, so yeah, next vehicle. All right, and this is the Mars Ascent Vehicle, and actually it will uh, drop down onto Mars, obviously, as well. It has room in the pod for uh, three Kerbals, I believe, and so we're carrying Jeb here, so we needed room for an extra Kerbal, and that's why we have the Mark 1 pod here. This Mark 1 pod has uh, just a lot of food, water, and oxygen, and there is a tank with some fuel, but mainly it's so that somebody can stay in orbit if necessary. I don't know if it's going to be necessary or not. We'll see. This is a maneuvering stage as we get close to... Uh, we have some maneuver plotted here. Let's take a look at that. So the Mars Ascent Vehicle is supposed to land on Mars, uh, drill for resources. Actually, the ISRU unit is separate. Uh, so it'll have to hook up to the ISRU unit. It'll have to fill up with uh, methane and oxygen is what we're drilling for. We're only a half tank of methane and oxygen right now, and some of that will be used to land on Mars. But uh, taking a look at our Mars situation. Yeah, so right now we're approaching very far away from Mars and we have an encounter. Uh, we have a adjustment in order to get closer. And that adjustment will take place in 245 days and will cost 103 meters per second. And that's probably pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close to when we actually encounter Mars. And uh, I guess that's because of the timing of the launch of this. We had a pretty good Mars transfer window. That's why we're launching all the missions now. It only costs like 3,700 meters per second to get to Mars. But I think this was the first part launched, so it was launched a little bit earlier. And so it couldn't quite take uh, full advantage of the window. The benefit of this particular launch window is that it's right at one of the nodes with respect to Mars. So rather than doing a separate inclination change halfway through, uh, most of the missions are doing their inclination change right away. So that is how that works. Anyway, so that is the Mars Ascent Vehicle. This is the liquid methane tank. And then in here, there is Aerozine and N204 completely filled up. Um, 
With the full tanks, it can get the Kerbals back to orbit around Mars and dock with whatever target we want to dock uh, it to, which should be the return vehicle, but also could be some sort of station around Mars for them to wait, uh, just in case the return vehicle isn't there yet, we might send some other supplies to help them out in the meantime. Okay, so that is that part of the plan. You can see the heat shield that will allow it to uh, air brake around Mars. Okay, this is a rover. This is the Burroughs rover. It's got a sky crane. This is what that is. And then it's just a little rover for two Kerbals. Little command seats in there. And there. Huge heat shield. Uh, thrusters that can extend out past the heat shield using Infernal Robotics parts and also retract to be protected by the heat shield and you can see communication parachutes the whole nine yards. So this is a very well deployed rover. I hope it will definitely survive its uh, entry to Mars. The trick is landing all these things at the same place really and that is uh, sort of the concern. But yeah, this is what will allow the Kerbals to get around. Next. Okay, well this is the all-important ISRU unit. This is going to drill for ore and convert it to methane and oxygen. I have my own little custom configuration to on these uh, stock ISRU units and drills uh, to make sure that it converts to the right fuel. And we also have um, fuel to uh, make sure that this can actually end up on Mars and that is the heat shield. That is the, the inflatable heat shield. So that is what we have there. We've also got a KIS container which will which has the um, well let's open it up. Oh not accessible from inside. Uh, that might be a problem. Uh, it was supposed to have the little connector ports for KIS uh, KAS you know the KAS connector ports. Um, I don't understand that. Okay, I think I might have made a mistake there. But you see the huge solar panels. That is to power the converter and the drills on Mars. So I don't know if it can power them for 24 hours, but that's alright. We have actually a few months to get it done, to get the drilling done and converting to methane and oxygen. So it should be alright. Ore tank and this is the methane and oxygen tank. Okay. So that is that. It's got parachutes, it's got the huge inflatable heat shield, and this will help it maneuver as it gets to Mars. And its trajectory at Mars is a crash course right now. So I'll just need a minor adjustment when it sits there to make sure it's not actually crashing into Mars. Okay, next. Okay, this is a random supply drop. It's just a bunch of food, water, and oxygen, and... Uh, and fuel. I mean, uh, well, the fuel is so that I can land there safely, but mostly it's about food, water, and oxygen. And it's got the connector ports on the outside here so that they can hook it up to whatever hab they have. The, again, the key thing is to make sure that it lands at the right place. And it is already on its way to Mars. I don't think it needed a correction either. So you can see it's still very close to Earth, but uh, it won't let me click on Mars. I think I've done too much jumping around in this, but yeah, it's it's got a Mars periapsis of 1,121 kilometers and rising for some reason. It doesn't have RCS on. I always turn RCS off. Maybe it's better if I jump to a different vessel so that that doesn't deviate more and more. Okay, next vessel. Okay, and the most recent launch was this. Uh, the struts are wrong. But uh, this portion right here, this is a decoupler and this is the maneuvering bit and the heat shield. Uh, this is a hopper. It is supposed to hop around on Mars uh, to get the Kerbals uh, to locations that maybe they can't reach with just the rover. So we're talking about covering hundreds of kilometers kind of thing. Uh, just in case that becomes necessary for some reason, maybe things aren't landed in the right place, that sort of idea. So yeah, that's what that's for. It's got, uh, I think it was 2,500 meters per second of delta V. It's got these little thrusters. And these little thrusters actually I've reconfigured to burn methane and oxygen. So if it hooks up with the ISRU unit, it can refill using the ISRU unit. It does not have much food, water, and oxygen though. 
so it needs to get them where they're going pretty quickly. And, uh, well, it'll be tricky. I didn't put parachutes on it. Oh, no, I did. I did put parachutes on it. Two little parachutes. So at least there's that. But, yeah, it's sort of a dangerous thing, but it's in case things go horribly wrong, we've got this other vehicle to help us out. That's the idea. Okay, so those are the launches I have done. And, of course, we've got interplanetary probes going all over the place in addition to these Mars missions. Those are still underway and have not reached their targets yet. It's a long-term sort of thing. Uh, actually, you can see uh, these trajectories, those are the Mars ones. All of those are the Mars ones heading out. Now, this is not all I intend to send to Mars. Again, it's a good encounter sort of situation, so I want to send more things. And we need to send the HAB, we need to send the return vehicle. Those are two very, very important things. And uh, possibly any other support equipment that anybody can think of. Uh, if you have any ideas about what we should send to Mars that hasn't been already covered by what I'm sending there, you can feel free to make suggestions about that. But that's, uh, that's the plan for the next few solar system colonization efforts is to continue pelting Mars with all sorts of things to see what sticks. Uh, uh, whatever works and whatever doesn't. We'll, we'll probably be doing a lot of F5 and F9 once we get to Mars uh, because we want to test all these things out legitimately and not have you know random mistakes like we're too deep in the atmosphere for the aero break and it burns up. I think I want to want to see where the air braking needs to happen uh, try and land them in the same spot, if they don't land in the same spot I'll, I'll quick load the save and try and get them all there And uh, but if it's uh, something intrinsic about the design for instance maybe the heat shield doesn't protect this properly and there's actually no way to get it uh, on the surface of Mars safely that would be a separate issue but uh, as long as there's some conceivable way of getting the things uh, to the surface of Mars. I want to make sure we try that out. And again, if you have any idea about how we can better keep our Kerbals safe, what other equipment we should send, uh, you can make those suggestions. But that's the state of solar system colonization so far. And uh, yep, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.